Is that loud? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, Tyler, no eagle head for you. Is that mine? I don't know what to do with it. Is this mine? I think it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, hi, and welcome to Hedgesville High School, home of your 2017 Hedgesville Eagles. I'm here with my good friend and partner, Tyler Bubb. Tyler, nice to have you back. Thanks for having me on. We're here for a great night of football. It's senior night here in Hedgesville at Muma Stadium as we will watch our senior boys play their last game on this field. Maybe not. We might host a playoff game. It all depends on this game in the following weeks. Uh, Tyler, coming off a couple tough losses to Musselman and Martinsburg, what do you think the Eagles need to do to win this game? They can't turn over the ball. Um, if they force turnovers on Hampshire, that would be very successful. They also need to win special teams battles. Yeah, last week, 83-7 uh, to seven game. Kind of hard to bounce back from that. Eagles had a long week of practice, but I think if this defense throws up a zero in the first quarter, it'll get their confidence back from last night or last week's drubbing. Maybe we can ride this wave all the way into playoffs. When you look at Martinsburg on paper, they're one of the most talented teams in this state. Great dynasty they have there but they have a lot of playmakers. I think Hedges will match up a lot better against Hampshire than they did last week against Martinsburg. Yep, tonight uh, Hampshire comes in at two and five, not the best season for them so far. Uh, a lot of common opponents for the Eagles and the Trojans. We played Preston, both beat Preston, Mountain Ridge, we beat Mountain Ridge, they lost to Mountain Ridge, and we both lost to Musselman. So a lot of common opponents, so we've seen the same offense and defense. Should be an interesting matchup between these teams tonight. Got you. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, part of the men's soccer team, I'd like to congratulate you on your sectional championship last night, 5-1 to one over Spring Mills. What's it feel like to be back-to-back -back sectional champs? Uh, it feels great. Um, we have a really good team. Yeah, the spring bowl is a good plan, but uh, we executed the game plan. Also, I'd like to gra congratulate the girls' team. They had a good season. They're going to keep going on to regionals against Washington. Yep, the girls beat Musselman last night at home to win the sec their, back their second straight nat or national title, sectional title over the Appleman. And they will, both soccer teams will play Washington in regionals. Tyler, you're on that team. You see them, you see, you're with those guys every day. What do you think you need to do to make it to the state uh, tournament? Well, we matched up against Washington pretty well. They play our style of soccer. We beat them off so uh, once this year. We're, we're confident we'll have a good game plan written up by the coaches, but we're excited. If you want to see those games, those will be Tuesday at Spring Mills High School. The boys are at 530. The girls will follow at 730. Winners of those games head to the state tournament in Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, some other interesting sports news. We'd like to shout out the volleyball team as they are heading, or actually they're already in Parkersburg for the Spook Fest Invitational. 
Uh, from what I understand, it should be a precursor to the state tournament. So I hope they hope you guys do good down there. Wish you guys luck. Sorry we can't be down there, but we got to bring this game to you guys. Make sure you can watch your boys one last time at Moomaw Stadium. We are about a little over 23 minutes until kickoff. So uh, some quick stats for you here. Uh, Jason Plotner, quarterback for the Eagles, senior quarterback. Uh, kind of an up and down season, 20 touchdowns, but 17 interceptions. We talked earlier that he's got to limit those for the Eagles to be successful. He's, he's gotten better. He's had a couple rough games, uh, a six interception game against South Hagerstown, a five interception game against Musselman. Both games were losses. But in the Martinsburg game, obviously we didn't play very well, 83-7, to but he only had two interceptions. So coming into this game, what do you think as a senior quarterback you – seem like you've had success you lead the area in passing yards with 2145 but you have that negative stat what do you think that does to his confidence you know if they get him going early with quick passes to the playmakers like Nigeria Smith and Malachi Brown but there's nothing more than what Jason wants he wants a win tonight possibly his last game here at this stadium and he just wants to have a good night tonight yeah you mentioned Malachi and Niger both leading the teams in receiving stats Malachi, 56 receptions for 908 yards. A good game tonight. He can eclipse that 1,000-yard mark. Both guys have seven touchdowns. Uh, Niger averages more yards uh, per catch. And Malachi both lead my, excuse me, Malachi and Niger both lead the team in all-purpose yards. And Niger's been a real big guy on defense. He doesn't seem that way coming into each game. You know, you don't think of him as like a big guy, but last week against Martinsburg, if you were at the game, you saw him. He was laying the wood, and he was hitting some people hard. It looked like he was fired up. Yeah, he's confident, trusts his ability. He's really a skilled playmaker, also is the leader of that defense. Yeah, Jesse Kane also had a very big game against Martinsburg. I mean, looking at the score, you don't think the defense would have big plays, but Jesse, he had his first interception of the year, had a really good uh, blow-up tackle in the backfield against Gerard Bowie. Really got the crowd into it. So even though they didn't, the score doesn't seem like they played well, you could tell that they were they had some big plays in that game. Yeah, he's also a leader on that defense, playing the outside linebacker position. Really makes a lot of good tackles in open field. Keeps the defense going well. And like we said, the defense, they're a, they're a good group of guys. They can bounce back from that performance last week. And I'm Coach Irish, I'm sure, has gotten them ready for tonight's game. Uh, went over Hampshire's offense, got everyone Joining where they need to be. Here soon we're going to bring you our senior night ceremony. Uh, really big, really good group of guys graduating this year. Like we said, uh, quarterback Jason Plotner, part of them. Ethan Faircloth, who's actually going to be playing some wide receiver tonight. Big boy running down the field. A lot of good guys graduating. They will be missed, but for right now they got this game. Bye week next week, and then spring mills to end the year before playoffs. And we are going to bring you the senior night ceremony evening, right now. And welcome to Moomaw Stadium, home of the Eagles. Where this evening we'd like to re uh, recognize our senior members of our Hedgesville High School football team, our cheer team, our band, and cross country. We will begin this evening with our senior football players. Our first senior is number five, Ethan Faircloth, who is being escorted tonight by his parents, Matt and Tanya Faircloth. Ethan plans on attending college and playing football, and his favorite memory in his first senior is his first senior year football game. The next senior is number six, Dylan Branner, who is being escorted by his parents, Dustin and Lyle Branner, and his sister Alexis. Dylan plans to attend WVU and major in pharmaceutical studies. He says his favorite memory is building his football family with his brothers. Next is senior number eight, Taylor Holchi. Escorted by his parents, Lori and Josh Houghton. Taylor plans to continue his education with hopes of playing football. Taylor's favorite memory is the first game of the 2016-17 football season. Our next senior is number 10, Jason Plotner, being escorted by his parents, Jennifer and Jason Plotner Sr. 
and his sister Rochelle. Jason plans to attend college, play football, and major in business. His favorite memory is going to going to PSU for 717. The next senior is number 13, Jamal Bland, being escorted by his parents, Wendell and Serena Bland. Jamal plans to attend college, play sports, and major in sports management. His favorite memory is earning a starting spot on the Eagle football team. Next is senior number 18, James Carroll, being escorted by his parents, Ryan and Mary Rose Carroll. James would like to go to college to major in engineering. He says his favorite memory is joining the Hedgesville High football team. Our next senior is number 21, Quentin Porter, who is being escorted by his parents, Donald and Cheryl Porter. Quentin plans on attending college and playing football while there. Quentin's favorite memory is of his first touchdown. Next is number 26, Colton Arendi, being escorted by his parents, Jason and Diane Arendi, and his sister, Sarah. Colton has plans to join the United States Air Force and then go into the police force. His favorite memory is getting to meet Penn State coach, James Franklin. Next is senior number 31, Joshua Tunstall, who is being escorted tonight by his, by his mother, Jeffrey Ann Parson. Joshua plans on attending Memphis University to major in business. He says his favorite me memory is winning the track state championship. Our next senior is number 42, Gavin Smoot, who is being escorted tonight by both his parents, Jeff and Stephanie Smoot, and his brothers Keenan and Aiden. Gavin plans to attend college and play football, and he says his favorite memory is winning his first game under Coach Urich. Next senior is number 55, Zar Parrish, who is being escorted tonight by his father, David Parrish. Zar plans on attend attending college to major in computer science. His favorite memory is gaining 10 pounds the day after winning the state wrestling tournament. <laughs> Next is senior number 59, Jonathan Stamball, being escorted tonight by his grandmother, Mary Ann Stamball. Jonathan would go to college and run track while there. He says his favorite memory is winning the state track meet. Our next senior is number 67, Abraham Hammond, who is being escorted tonight by his teacher, Mrs. Bev McDonald. He plans on going to theater school to become an actor or comedian. His favorite high school memory is getting to know a lot of people and sharing laughs together. The next senior is number 78, Luke Fines, who is being escorted by his mother, Beth Severo. Luke plans to go to college to study pre-med and become a neurologist. His favorite memory is the football party at Bill and Branner's house last summer. Next is senior number 83, Jonathan Breeden, being escorted tonight by his parents, Chip and Danielle Breeden. Jonathan plans on becoming a mechanic and says his favorite memory is his first interception in high school. Let's give a round of applause to all the senior members of the Hedgesville High Football Team. We will now recognize our senior cheerleaders. Our, our first senior cheerleader is Antoinette Fortune, who is being escorted tonight by her mom, Kristen McFalls. Antoinette plans to run track at Marshall University and become an anesthesiologist. Her favorite memory is cheering at football and basketball games. The next senior is Maggie Hensel, who is being escorted by her parents, Chip and Karen Hensel, and her sister, Ella. Maggie plans on attending WVU to major in pre-law and minor in business. Her favorite memory is of Thursday night dinners with the team. Next is senior Mallory Roan, who is being escorted by her parents, Jamie and Kathy Roan. Mallory will attend college and study medical imaging and radiology. Her favorite memory is being able to cheer at every football game her senior year. Our next senior is Taylor Sherman, who is being escorted tonight by her parents, Angie and John Sherman. 
Taylor plans to obtain a degree in radiology, and she says her favorite memory is competing at regionals for the first time last season. The next senior is Caitlin Smith, being escorted tonight by her parents, Jonathan and Tommy Smith. Caitlin plans on going to both WVU and law school. Her favorite memory is meeting new friends at Camp Lincoln. Next is senior Amanda Starlifer, who is being escorted tonight by her parents, Kevin and Melissa Starlifer. Amanda has plans to attend WVU, major in pre-law and political science, and attend law school. Her favorite memory is a homecoming week every year. Let's have a round of applause for all the senior members of our Hedgesville High Cheerleading Club. We would now like to recognize the senior members of the Hedgesville High School Marching Band. Our first senior is Thomas Aitken, who is being escorted tonight by his parents, Charles and Kelly Aitken. Thomas plans on attending college for a degree in aerospace engineering. His favorite memory is of the time Mr. Hammett gave a motivational speech during competition. The next senior is Yaron Arciaga, who is being escorted tonight by his mother, Eden Arciaga, and his brother, Roger. YJ plans on attending Potomac State College and WVU to major in mechanical engineering. His favorite memory is, is of playing the rock and roll pharaoh Elvis in the, high, in the school musical. Next is senior Avery Burkhart, being escorted tonight by her mother, Amanda Ryder, his mother, and, and his grandmother, Patricia Burkhart. Avery plans on attending Shepherd University to major in psychology and also complete the Disney College program. His favorite memory is of making incredible friends and even more incredible memories. The next senior is Emily Case, who is being escorted tonight by her parents Mike and Sherry Case, and her siblings Natalie and Michael. Emily will attend WVU and plans on going into medicine. Her favorite memory is when the band went to New York for a competition. Our next senior is Tyler Francesconi, being escorted tonight by his mother, April Francesconi, and his grandmother, Karen Hargrove. Tyler plans to major in psychology at Shepherd and then go into a private practice. His favorite memory is hanging out with some of his best friends in New York City. The next senior is Zach Gamble, being escorted tonight by his parents, Robert and Melissa Derby. Zach has plans to enlist in the Coast Guard Marine Science Program. His favorite memories are of the 2017 homecoming and cheering for the Powerpuff game. Next is senior Andrew Murray, being escorted tonight by his mother, Angela Murray. Andrew plans on attending college for music education and says his favorite memory is marching through the tunnel at MetLife Stadium for band nationals. Next senior is Alexa Muida. Escorted tonight by her parents, Francis and Maria Moita. Alexa wants to go to WVU and study to become a psychiatrist, and her favorite memory is going to New York City for nationals. Next is Jordan Potter, who is being escorted tonight by his parents, John and Tammy Potter. Jordan plans to attend WVU and major in computer science. His favorite memory is winning the boys' state track title last year. The next senior is Cassandra Shepard, who is being escorted by her parents, Norma and Scott Shepard. Cassandra plans to attend six years of massage therapy school and then join the United States Army. Her favorite memory is joining the marching band in ninth grade. Next is senior Allison Shiflett, who is being escorted tonight by her parents, Daniel and Carrie Joe Carabo. Allison plans to become a wildlife rehabilitator and own as many dogs as possible. Her favorite memory is going to the AP language field trip to Washington, D.C. Our final senior is Jamie Smith, who is being escorted tonight by her mother, Krista Cunningham, and her sister, Erin Ammon. Jamie wants to further her education in graphic design and have a career in animation. Her favorite memory is becoming part of the HHS marching band her junior year. Let's have a round of applause for the senior members of the HHS Marching Band 
Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise, and gentlemen, remove your hats for the presentation of, the, of our nation's colors and for the playing of our national anthem. The colors are being presented by members of the Berkeley County Air Force Junior ROTC. The members of the color guard are Colonel Sage Burdett, First Lieutenant Nicola Sykes, Staff Sergeant Anastasia Dusak, Senior Airman Megan Barrett.
Thank you to the marching band and our visitors from Head to Jim Hill School this evening. It's time to bring on the Eagles. All right, we are now three minutes away from kickoff here in Hedgesville. A great performance by the band with their guests from the middle school. A lovely ceremony for the seniors of fall sports. All right, Tyler, minutes away from football. You ready? Yes, sir. Another great night for some football. Hopefully see Hedgesville bounce back with a victory over Hampshire. Looks like all the seniors are going to be their captains tonight for the coin toss. It's pretty cool. Leading, you've got Jason Plotner, Zar Parrish, and Ethan Faircloth. And here come the Eagles. It looks like Hedgesville won the toss, and they will receive the opening kick. So Coach Urish wants his offense off there early and wants to get a big game started quickly. These seniors from Hedgesville have been through a lot. They've seen the losing seasons. They've also rebuilt the program from Hedgesville. Um, everyone started believing last year, and now they're starting to execute and see the results coming. Yeah, and it's not easy to see your two senior leaders go down with injury. Uh, Taylor Holchi, a torn labrum in the second week of the season, and then Gavin Smoot, before the season even started, a uh, torn ACL in a seven-on-seven -seven tournament. It's really hard to see those two guys go down not be able to play their full senior season, but they'll, they'll bounce back. Gavin's going to uh, Fork Union Academy to play for a, about a year and then head into college. So he's he's got a good plan. John Hicks will kick off to the dangerous Malachi Brown. And we are about ready for football. A decent kick, and it will be fielded by Devin Heath at about the 16-yard line. He's up the sideline, and he's got one man to beat. 
And he is tripped up, still in bounds, and finally taken down at the 35-yard line. Explosive return to start the game. Gives good start and field position for the Eagles. Let's see what Jason and his offense can do. Electric return by Devin. He's not the main kick returner, but that ball just happened to bounce into his hands, and he took it up the sideline. Virtually untouched until about the 40, and then tripped up at the 35. I think the Eagles here, Yurska going to call a play and go for a touch to right here on this play. Opening play of the game, you think they're shooting for the end zone? Yes. We've got two wide receivers on each side of the field. Jason's alone in the backfield. Sends Brown in motion. It's a quarterback keeper. And quickly wrapped up for a gain of about two. Well, they didn't take the deep threat. They're just... Again, Plotner used to the game, he took his first hit, so now he's more comfortable. We'll see what he sees here on this next second down. Again, alone in the backfield. Wide receivers all over. And he's rushed out of the pocket. Quick pass to Hunter Coe. Tries to go upfield, but he is taken down at the 25. A good play and should be good enough for a first down. Plotner did a good job evading the rush, keeping the play alive and giving time for his receivers to get open. Same formation for the Eagles, not really changing anything up. Plotner with a hard count trying to draw the defense. As it, he didn't get the first down, it was a th now third and one, first third down for the Eagles tonight. Quick screen to Heath. Good block by Smith. Heath evades the would-be tackler, evades another one, and still on his feet, and finally shoved out at the seven-yard line. A good run, and yard after yards after catch for Heath. The Eagles need to score touchdowns today in the red zone to really make it tough for Hampshire to keep up with them. And a good stop for, start for Plotner as he's two for two quickly with 28 yards, roughly. And now he's got Smoot in the backfield with him. Let's see if this is a handoff in the red zone. It is Smoot up the middle, and he is in for a touchdown. A quick drive for the Eagles, and they cash in on amazing field position. Good blocks on the right side. Smoot found the hole, and it was an easy walk-in touchdown for Hedgesville. That's the way Coach Urish wanted to start the game. Yeah, about a minute and 51 seconds into the game, his Eagles are on the board first. Finnegan Hall on for the extra point. And Finnegan, like always, up and good. 7-0 Eagles with 10 minutes and 9 seconds remaining in the first, first quarter. Now we get to see what Hampshire's offense is made of. Defense out of a quick score. Let's see how their offense responds. See if they can keep this game close or if Hedges was just going to take it and run away. Back deep for the Trojans, Calvin Moreland and Logan Clower. The Eagles have uh, had some success with some pooch kicks. Let's see what Coach Juris has up his sleeve if he just decides to kick it off to their deep men. They decide to kick it deep. An open field. He's got a lane. Moreland finally dragged down by Smoot at the 45 yard line. Not what you wanted to see from your kickoff defense. Special teams are gonna play a huge factor in the game today. So far, 
allowing big kickoff returns for the offenses to work with. Exactly. Great starting field position for both teams now. Both teams starting their first drives in opposing territory. The Trojans will start at the 45, and we'll see if what their offense is made of. We don't have a lot of information on them here. David Mayfield is the quarterback for the Trojans. Sends a man in motion. Toss and a fumble. Nice. Nigeria Smith pounces on it, and what a break for the Eagles after letting up a huge special teams error. First play from scrimmage for the Trojans is a fumble, and Smith pounces on it. You can't have that for Hampshire. The defense is going to be tired from the last drive, and now they're now they're going to be back in their own territory, and Hedgesville is going to be driving again. Hedgesville will start their drive on the Hampshire 45 after that turnover. Plotner again alone in the backfield. He's got Heath and Smith on the far side. and Brown and Co. near side. Looks that way. Flushed out of the pocket. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got Brown. Brown goes up and makes the catch and walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. They cash in on the turnover quickly. A 45-yard bomb by Jason Plotner. Good play to evade the defense and chuck it downfield for his playmakers. Brown's so good in the air. Just overpowers the defender and walks in for the score. Once again, Plotner evades the rush, makes a play at nothing, and another good play happens. Plotner, just three passes tonight, all three completed. And Finnegan Hall is up and good with the extra point. And quickly, it is 14-0 in favor of the Eagles. What a start for Hedgesville. Yours has to be pleased on the sideline. Nineteen seconds after the Eagles' first score of the game, when Smoot ran it in from seven yards out, they punch it in on the turnover. So if you're Hampshire and you're on that sideline, what a blow, a crushing blow to start this game. You've had the ball for maybe 30 seconds. 12 seconds, <laughs> 30 and, seconds, and you're already down 14 zip. That's tough. Yeah, um, Hampshire's coach can't be happy with that start. Not the start they're looking forward to. Um, playing from behind, they're going to struggle if they can't get a passing game going. Moreland, Clower are back deep again. Let's see if they keep it away from Moreland after his first electric return. Shorter kick, bounces at the 20. Joshua Hoopingarner on the return, taken down hard by the Eagles special teams. Jonathan Stanball credited with that tackle. And the Trojans will begin their second drive on the 28 yard line. Looks like they're another running formation. One wide receiver near side covered by Porter. Man coverage. It's a run. Up the middle, jukes out of a couple tackles and is finally dragged down by Heath for a first down. Logan Clower with the big run. Looks like Hampshire's going to try to use their size on the offensive line and win the battle in the trenches and get rushing, rushing yards going. They've got some big boys. John Hicks up there, up front. Dustin Swisher at guard. They can... They can compete in the trenches. Let's see if they can open up some holes for their running backs. It looks like they run the uh, triple option. A pass play to no one. The only man in the vicinity was the ref, and I don't think he's going to catch that one. So a miss, uh, miss call there from Mayfield and his offense. And that's why they run the ball mostly, probably. They definitely set up in that triple option formation that the Eagles used to run a few years ago before Coach Urish came in and seemed to install some sort of air raid offense. And the Eagles really struggled with it. That's when we uh, did not win many games.
Clower with the ball again around the edge, up the middle, and is tackled by Brown for another first down. So Clower, two big runs on this drive. The Trojans run offense similar to Georgia Tech. They run that option look. But if they're behind in this game, they're going to have to pass the ball. So they, they need to score points to stay in the game, keep it one possession. Well, it looks like they've run the same play twice now to Clower, and he's gotten big yards, two first downs of 12 yards plus each time. One receiver far side now. Brad Sigley is covered by Brown. A huge end around, and it's blown up at the line of scrimmage by Smoot for maybe a yard. It's a good play by Smoot to stay, stay his position on the linebacker spot. Didn't f get fooled by the rush. Eagle showing blitz. And Hampshire's going to have to call a timeout before the play clock ran out and they were going to get a delay game penalty. That's their first time out of the half. So if you're just joining us, your Eagles are up 14-0 after an eight and smooth seven yard touchdown. And then in the, after the ensuing kickoff, uh, Trojans first, draw, or first play from scrimmage uh, pitch back to the running back, blown up in the backfield. Nigeria Smith hops on the fumble. And then the next play from scrimmage, the Eagles, Jason Plotner, throws a 45-yard bomb to Malachi Brown, one of his favorite receivers. And that's where we stand right now. Plotner on just three passes already has 73 yards. He leads the area with 2,145 yards, and he's already got his 21st touchdown of the season. Another pitch. A hoop and ganger with a short three-yard run, and that'll bring up third down. Look for the defense to start stacking the box if uh, Hampshire can't prove to pass the ball very well. And let's see if they blitz from the outside. Most of these runs don't seem to be up the middle. They try to go around the blocks. Let's see if the Eagles defense picks up on that. Third and six here from the 32. Hand off to Clower. He's met by Nigeria Smith, but his offensive line is pushing him. It's going to be short. And let's see if the Trojans go for it. I think the Trojans would go for it, take their chances. It's going to be a long field goal if they do try to take a field field goal, but it's fourth and manageable for him. Yep. Fourth and three from the 29. This would be a, a good play call if they can get it off and make this first down and possibly get back in this game. And we were watching them in warm-ups. 75 Hicks, he's got a boot on him, and if they really wanted to try, they, he could get one up. But they're pretty confident that they can ma handle this fourth down. Clower in motion. It's a fake. He's going to pass. He's got a man deep. Can't catch it. A good play call and well executed, just passed too far out of reach. Hoop and Garner couldn't bring it in, and the Eagles will take over at the 29. That would have been a big momentum shift. Hampshire would have had confidence back in their offense. He definitely had a lane to the end zone, and he just couldn't grab it. I don't know if it was too far. It looked like he just went right through his hands. Aiden Smoot in the backfield for, with Plotner to start this drive. The receiver's got man-to-man -man coverage. Might take a shot here. Nope. Hand off to hand. Smoot. A good first down call, and this may move the sticks. We'll see where they spot it. And they will give him the first down. Really helps Plotner when you know your offensive line's blocking for you and you can establish the run game early. 
offensive line uh, actually gained some players. Anthony Fortune is now eligible for the Eagles as a play action pass to Co. Hits his hands and he can't bring it in. A good play and a good throw by Plotner. Put it only where his receiver could get it, but Hunter just couldn't bring that one down. Good effort, though. Coe's got good size, can catch a lot of jump balls if he's given the opportunity, especially with man-to-man -man coverage on the outsides. Coe's got 13 receptions on the year with three touchdowns. And on this second and 10 play, we've got trips receivers on the near side. Plotner rolling out, looking for Coe again. Fires down there, and that one's just too deep. So back-to-back -back incompletions bring up third and long from the 39. Let's see what Coach Yurish gives his offense to work with here. That's a tough throw for Plotner to make. Rolling to his left, also has to watch for a blitz. Throwing across his body. It was a deep ball, but Hunter was well covered down here. God. Hand off to Smoot inside. Finds a hole, and he's got the first down. Good call on third down by the Eagles. Taken down by Clower. But that'll move the sticks. Porter in a receiver now, closest to us. Jason's looking his way. Goes deep instead, again overthrown. So some miscommunication with his receivers as Jason Plotner started three for three, but since has not completed a pass. Brown going for the post. Didn't have quite enough time to reach it. Co checks back into the game at wide receiver. Plotner wanted Brown to go towards the end zone more and Brown didn't quite have the time to get there. Looked like he was running more towards the sideline on that play. Co lone man on the far side. Man coverage. If he can get a jump ball, he's got quite the size advantage on that corner. Instead, it's a quarterback draw for Plotner. He's got a first down a little bit more as he runs over a man, and he's gang tackled at the 33. Good run by Plotner for the first down. Did a good job keeping that hand off. Found the lane. Took it and now has first down. So after a couple miscommunications in the air, the Eagles have taken to the ground and gotten three first downs on this drive. Two by Smoot and that big run by Plotner as they move into Hampshire territory. Oh, yeah, Ash is now in the backfield for Hedgesville. Pitch to Ash. He's going to try to find that edge. Flag on the play. He had a block. This one's it coming back. It's going to be a hole. Definitely. Referee was quick to see that penalty, and it will negate the eight-yard gain by Ash. It's just a bad penalty. There's really no reason for it. They have to limit those in bigger, no, no offense to Hampshire, but bigger games in the EPAC, especially around playoff time. Yeah, in the Muslim game, penalties were definitely an issue for the Eagles. Really held them back. Martinsburg wasn't so much of an issue, but they were present. Something they're going to have to work on as playoff, playoffs roll around. After the penalty, it'll be first and 24 from the 47. They have to get some of these yards back to make it an easier second down play. Plotner frustrated with Smith as he didn't get the motion call right away. He's looking towards him. Throws it deep. smith got speed. He pulls it in. He ran around the defender and hauled it in at the five. Great throw by Plotner. And he threw to Smith or one of the playmakers. It's always a good play call. He drew up the uh, linebacker, and the linebacker never had a chance with the speed advantage of Smith. Another 42-yard throw for Plotner. Well placed as they set. That'll set up shop first and goal from the three. Ash in the backfield. I wouldn't be surprised if they give it to him and let him pound it in. They've been successful on the ground. I don't see why they wouldn't run it.
keeper by Plotner, flag down. He lost the ball and it looked to be recovered by Hampshire. Let's see what the call is. That can't happen. Might be a May, hold. Was a delay again? The clock is at zero. I didn't see what happened. I saw Plotner running the end zone and then he was stripped. Holding, Holding. on the offense is the call. It's declined. First down Hampshire, the fumble stands as Plotner fumbles at the goal line. He had a clear route to the end zone. That gives life to the Hampshire sideline. That's a big confidence booster for him. The Eagles were driving and looked to be punching it in until Plotner was stripped at the goal line. And the Hampshire Trojans will take over at the three. Let's see if the Eagles bring the house here. They look like they are, and they're gonna might try to get a safety out of this. Hands off up the middle. Maybe gives Hampshire a little bit more breathing room. All right, it looks like the defense is stacking the box. Going to make Mayfield pass and beat him through the air. Moreland up the middle for five. Gets him to about the seven. Like I said, a little more breathing room for their uh, option offense. End around, blown up in the backfield. Looked like Kane was first to greet him. If Hedgesville can get a stop here on third down, it's going to give special teams an opportunity to return it back with good field position and two athletic playmakers in Brown and Smith that have a chance to make a play for Hedgesville. Third and four from the eight for the Trojans. It's a pass, and he actually is going to pull it down. He's got a first down and a lot more. Mayfield down the sideline. Nigeria Smith coming to greet him, and he's finally shoved out of bounds. Huge run for the Trojans on third and four from their own eight-yard line. There is a flag on the play, and oh, what a blow. It's holding on the offense. Their biggest play from scrimmage is coming all the way back. That one hurts. Biggest play. Huge play from scrimmage. Eight, your own eight yard line and your quarterback takes it all the way into Eagle territory. Finally chased out of bounds by Smith. And you gotta come all the way back and redo it. Great play call by the Trojans. They should keep that one in their back pocket for later in the game. They were on the eight yard line. Now they're gonna be pushed back, which makes it even harder to obtain this first down. But it'll be third and two. So the hold must have been while Mayfield was already past the line of scrimmage. Ball on the 10. Hand off to Clower. He's got the edge. He's got a block. Nigeria Smith coming to greet him. And forcefully gets him out of bounds, but not after he gets the first down. So another good play by the Trojans to manage that third down deep in their own territory and get some breathing room. Clowers had some impressive runs so far. They're going to try to use the offense and push it around him. 20-yard 20, 20 run by Clower gets him up to the 30. And the co defensive coordinator, Coach Faircloth, is not happy with his defense as they had two chances to keep Hampshire back deep and they couldn't convert on either one. Mason, just like you pointed out in pregame, Smith showing that closing speed. Laid a good lick on Clower. He's got 66 tackles, which leads the team, and this stat is what blows my mind. Of those 66 tackles, 54 are solo. As Brown comes up and makes a nice stop after about a yard. But Niger, he's all over this field. You, can't, you won't see a play that he's not involved in. He leads the team in interceptions with six. He, hasn't, he used to average an interception a game. I was giving him a little, give, heckling him a little bit, telling him he's got to get that stat back up. So after the two-yard gain, the Trojans will have second and eight from the 32. Still down 14 as we approach the two-minute mark in this first quarter. Hand off to Clower. 
He's met by a Breck and gang tackled with Jesse Kane. Third and six coming up for the Trojans. Let's see if they run another end around or maybe that play that they ran earlier that got called back with Mayfield. See if they can get another big run and maybe get on the board before this first quarter ends. One wide receiver near side. Eagles showing blitz. Mayfield back to pass, pressured. He's got a man, he's got Clower. Pass complete and tackled by Brown at the 25. What a play call and what a throw by Mayfield. Really good play fake by Mayfield. Got the uh, linebackers and cornerbacks to pause for a minute and then found Clower wide open down the middle of the field. That's where Hampshire can get you. You know, run first offense. When they do throw that pass play in play, it's usually pretty effective and could surprise the defense. Yeah, but it looked like the uh, defensive line by the Eagles was frozen trying to see who got the ball. But Mayfield just rolled out and fouled Clower by himself downfield. And it's a good thing Brown's got that speed to bring him down. And that could have went for six. Mayfield out again. It looks like he's going to tuck it and run. And dragged down by Kane. Small, short gain there. Impressive drive for the Trojans after starting at their own four. It'd be a shame if they can't punch it in right here. We are now under a minute under the, in the first quarter, left in the first quarter. If you're Mayfield, though, you can't turn over the ball. It'd be a drive killer. Momentum would shift all the way back to Hedgesville and just really put the offense down. Might be a conservative play call, like a little handoff to the left side as they're loading it. Hands off to Moreland. He's got an open lane to the end zone. Being chased, and he is in for the touchdown. Moreland from 23 yards out. Touchdown Trojans, and they're on the board. And what an impressive drive for Hampshire. Really good block by the tackle. Dustin Swisher weighing in at 205 pounds. Opened the gap, and the running back found it, and they scored. Here's what we were talking about. Big number 75, John Hicks. Got a boot off. on him. Kick is up and good. So 26 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Hedgesville, 14, Hampshire, 7. That's exactly what you want to see out of, if you're on that Trojan side, that's exactly what you want to see out of your offense. After a huge fumble recovery at the one, two yard line, drive all the way down the field with some help with some penalties. And you punch it in for seven and get right back in this game. Yeah, it was an impressive drive. Shows that they are capable of making plays and um, driving down the field. Hedgesville's defense will have to make some adjustments. And now, we said, we talked about it earlier, hinted at it, that Hampshire's got some big boys in the trenches, and they really opened up a hole for Moreland to just pretty much go untouched until he was brought down at the goal line and eventually rolled into the end zone for six. Those big guys down there in the trenches, that's what they're good at. Making space for the running backs, especially Clower, make good plays. Clower, just, just alone the first quarter, looks to be their most athletic playmaker. He's probably had the most success on the ground for the Trojans so far. Hicks is back to kick it off for the Trojans. Smith. Brown and Heath deep for the Eagles. And a spiral kick heading toward the sideline. Heath fields it at the 12, setting up his blocks. And he is met at the 23 yard line. Good tackle by the Trojans. Big hit by the middle linebacker, Michael Hayes. Listed at 177. Really hit Heath there good. So the Eagles will start 
at their own 24-yard line. 21 seconds left in this first quarter. A good half, or excuse me, good quarter by the Eagles so far. Just the one slip up by Plotner on the fumble that led to the Hampshire's first points of the game. We got Play blown penalty. dead and what was it? False start. False, false start by the Eagles. So another penalty is gonna make it first and 15 now. Yeah, when you start a drive, in your own territory, you want to get a good first play. And so far, first and long, they need to get these yards back. Coe, Smith, and Brown out wide for the Eagles. Heath in motion now. Crossing pattern for Brown. Smith drew all the attention. Brown with a nice move at the 40. Tries to set up a block, and he's going to go. Touchdown, Eagles. Malachi Brown, what an electric playmaker. A great juke near midfield, and he took it all the way to the house. Really nice play call. If you didn't see it, Smith drew all the attention. He's been the go-to guy, but Brown just went on a crossing pattern and took it all the way to the house. Just shows you give these wide receivers a chance for hedges, well, good things will happen. That's Brown's second touchdown catch of the night. This one goes for 71 yards. So the Eagles managed to get their points back before the end of the first quarter. Now with six seconds remaining, your Hedgesville Eagles 21, Hampshire 7. Yeah, when the Eagles have been getting the ball, they haven't been wasting a lot of time to get in the end zone. Now Plotner is now five, excuse me, five of eight with two touchdowns already. So a good first quarter for him and the Eagle offense. So this kickoff should be the last play of this opening quarter as Clower, Moreland, and Hoppen Garner are back deep. Short kick over the head of Hicks, fielded by Hoppen Garner. He evades a tackle by the Eagle. Gets around Smith. And a flag comes in late as a Breck and Parrish make the stop as the quarter runs out. He did a nice job of reversing fields to get a pretty good return out of that. Might be a holding or a block in the back there that could take this play back. Chop block on Hampshire. You don't see those calls much in high school, mostly in college, but that one, ref saw that one, got that flag in there quick. So some highlights from that first quarter. Smoot's seven yard touchdown run, got the Eagles going, and then a quick fumble recovery by Smith. 
And the next play, Malachi Brown with his first touchdown catch of the game went for 45 yards. He later caught one for 71 before the quarter ended on a beautiful throw by Jason Plyder and Brown did the rest. Hampshire got their lone score of the night on a 23-yard run. And Mayfield and his Trojan offense will start this drive at the 17. Not the best starting field position to start off with, but if they could sustain a few first downs, possibly get into field goal range for Hicks with a big kick. And they've shown that they're not afraid to start deep in their own territory. Like we said, that scoring drive started at their own three. And a handoff to Moreland up the middle, quickly stopped for a gain of about two or three. That pitch play didn't fool uh, Ethan Faircloth. Big guy wearing number five tonight. Looks a little snug on him, though. <laughs> Second and seven from their own 20 now. Hooping Garner in motion as the handoff goes to Clower. It breaks a couple tackles and is brought down from behind by a brick. That'll bring up third and short here for the Trojans. Let's see if they can make one of those big plays happen like they have on third down. They're not, they're not just going to run it up the middle, try to get that first down. They go outside and they try to get big yards on third down. The Eagles defense brought in Anthony Fortune, big number 75, to try to stop the inside. Hooping Garner in motion, fake pitch to him. Ball's fumbled, and it looks like Fortune hopped on it, and the Eagles do have it. Like you said, Anthony Fortune put in there to stop the run up the middle, stopped the run and got a fumble recovery out of it. So the Eagles will have great starting field position at the 27 of Hampshire. Let's see if they can push this lead even further. Low snap handled by Plotner, handoff to Brown. He goes around the edge and is held up by Michael Hayes. If you're Hampshire, you're really going to want to hold Hedgesville to a field goal. I think that'd be a win for them defensively as uh, Hedgesville's been started in their own opponent's territory. Most draws. Plotner, low throw to Porter. Couldn't be hauled in. On a third and five base, where do you think they go? What type of play call do you think they call? I think a slant here would work well. They've got Smoot in the backfield now. Probably might be an inside handoff to him. He's had some success up the middle. He's got his playmakers out wide, Brown and Smith on the far side. If they do run the ball with Smoot, if they can get three or four yards, don't be surprised if Yurish goes for it. Smoot up the middle. And it looks like he'll have it. And he will. First down Eagles. Good run by Smoot to move the chains. Smoot lines up right behind Jason Plotner this time. Hand off to him up the middle. Offensive line looked to have helped push him in. Inside the 10, another helmet came off for the Trojans. Second to, I still think they keep the ball on the ground. Yeah, you don't want to risk a turnover here late through the air. 
play blown dead. Timeout Hampshire, their second of the half. Because that helmet coming off, that player had to come off for Hampshire and they had a late substitution. All right, so if you're in that Hedgesville huddle, what are you telling your guys to make sure they punch this in for six? Um, offensive line has good, get good push up in the middle. Plotner, if he does the pass the ball, he can't turn it over. Um, it's too, too important of a play to uh, not get points out of this. Yeah, definitely. He's going to have to be make a smart throw if they do decide to go to the air on the seven yard line. Kind of close. Wouldn't be surprised if they hand it off to Smoot. Now, if you're in that Trojan, if you're on that Trojan sideline, what are you telling your defense right now? Stay strong. Don't make any defensive penalties. As if they do, it'd be a first and goal for the Eagles. Defense has to, if they hold the Eagles to a field goal, it'll be good for them. And they'll have more confidence. Hand off to Smoot. Wrestle down for maybe a yard. Dustin Swisher on the stop there. It's a good tackle by Swisher, but good second effort by Smoot to pick up the first down. So it'll be first and goal from about the five. Plotner rolling to his left. He's got Smith in the back of the end zone. A good toss and touchdown for the Eagles. Good job by Plotner, rolling out to his left, going across his body to find Smith in the end zone. Not to turn over, turn over the ball either. That's a big touchdown for Hedgesville. And pending this extra point, the Eagles will push their lead to 21. Kick is up and good. Finnegan Hall 4-4 on the night with extra points. Hampshire, is this a must score for the offense? If I'm on that side, I'm telling my offense they have to get in the end zone here. Keep it within two scores. I wouldn't say it's four down territory yet, but if they want to keep this game close, they're definitely going to have to find the end zone on this drive. Maybe another good kick return by Clower or Copenhagen, or excuse me, Copenhaver. Uh, Finnegan Hall, he's been kind of pooch kicking it a little bit. Maybe helps with the returns. Clower, I'd definitely keep it away from Clower, though. He seems to be the speed demon on the Hampshire return team. But Moreland's shown he can run, and so is Ho Hoopin Garner. Man, his name's tripping me up tonight. Yeah, it's a tough one to say. That's why I let you do that. <laughs> The furthest the Trojan return men are at is the 10 yard line, so they don't expect a deep kick, but Finnegan can definitely kick it deep. He has over 20 touchbacks on the year. Another pooch kick, bounces a little past the 35 and it's jumped on, oh, almost. Now jumped on by Hicks, and they're gonna start this drive at the 30. Little scary. Scary play there by the Trojans. He j looked like he had it and then just scooted away from him, but he pulled it back in. Those big guys don't have the safest hands. Good job by Hicks, though, to smother and make sure his team recovered that kickoff. Yeah, I think the plan there was to keep it in the air long enough for the uh, playmakers on the Hedgesville special teams to get down there try to hop on it. And they had their chance, but Hicks was quick enough to jump back on it as the Trojans will take over at the 31. Clower in motion. Pitch to him. Tackled and dragged down by Smith and Jesse Kane. Good job by Smith. Coming from his safety position at Tau Clower for a minimal game. Also nice job by Jesse Kane to shed his block and help Smith because it looked like Clower was getting away from him a little bit there.
your hamstring. You can't lose yards here. Good stop by the Hedgesville D-line. Maybe a yard, if that. Another third and short for the Trojans. They've proven all night that they can handle these third down plays. Let's see if the Eagles maybe bring the house, see if they can stop this one in the backfield. Hampshire's in the spot. They want have an opportunity to pick up a first down here on third and short. I think Hampshire's going to try to wear down Hedgesville's defensive line late in the game. So if they can stay in it, they have a chance. Last year, these teams played a really hard-fought game down in Hampshire in Romney. As Clower is met, this may be a close call, but I think they're going to give it to him. And, yeah, he did move the sticks. Last year, Hampshire pretty much led the game the entire way, but the Eagles found the end zone late to take a 26-21 game and bring it back to Hedgesville. Pitch to the outside, good blocking. And Smith comes up and makes a nice tackle at about the first down line. We're gonna have the first down. Trent Corbin with the run there. Hampshire continues to show that they're gonna run the ball and do it with some success. Corbin, some fresh legs. Have we seen um, Moreland and Hobbinganger and Clower all running? Corbin's first time touching the ball, and that was a pretty good 10-yard run right there. Mayfield only has two passes on the night. One for, eight, for 31 yards. Hand off to Clower. Smith misses the tackle. The only man has a chance. He cuts back inside, and Faircloth is going to drag him down at about the 12. Good run by Clower. He's proven he's the man to go to for the Trojans. Really good jump cut, even fooled Smith, one of the best defensive players on the defensive side of the ball for Hedgesville. Yep, 35-yard run for Clower. Gets his team in the red zone. What's really impressive by this Hampshire offense is they're showing that they're going to run the ball, and they keep doing it with success. Hedgesville's going to have to make a defensive adjustment. Hand off to Corbin. No real hole there as Paris drags him down from behind. Hampshire really needs to score a touchdown here to keep it only to a two possession game. First and goal from the nine for Hampshire. Corbin in motion again, toss to him. He's got the blockers. And Kane comes from his linebacker position to shove him out of bounds. Good stop by the Eagles. And like we said before this drive started, Hampshire's gonna need to punch this in to stay in this game and keep it close. And they're doing they're, another impressive drive for him right here. Another third and short, right where they want to be. Ball on the three, Corbin in motion again. This time they fake the pitch and give it to Hayes up the middle, and he's in for six. The linebacker, Michael Hayes, punches it in for the Trojans' second score of the game. What a drive by the Trojans. Really impressive. Shows they can still run the ball. They have confidence in their offensive line to block. Late sub by the Trojans. Pending the extra point, they'll keep this deficit to only 14. Hicks back with the big boot. Nearly blocked by Smith, but he gets it up and through. So with five minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the second quarter, 
Eagles up 14. Hampshire might have left just a little bit too much time though for the Eagles offense to work with. The Eagles have proven they can go down the field quickly. But if the Eagles, if they can get a good return back here, you know, also give uh, Plotner a chance to score and not have to worry about, you know, turning the ball over deep in his own territory. Finnegan all is also a big factor. He's got a big foot, so if they are on the 30, you know, fourth and five, they do have a chance to get points before going into the half. Five minutes, 12 seconds. I think they've got plenty of time to march down this field, but let's see what happens here. The Trojans have shown they can force a turnover and get the ball back and march down this field. Let's see if Hicks tries to pin the Eagles deep. He's been kicking towards Heath tonight. Let's see if he targets him again and keeps it away from the electric returners of Brown and Smith. This one's gonna go to Brown Field. Muffed actually at the 12, picks it up, cuts back inside, and nearly spins out of a tackle, but he's gonna be dropped at about the 25 yard line. Not the greatest starting field position, but as Mason alluded to, there's five minutes left for the offense to work with. About a 13 yard return for Brown. First time he's got a chance to return a kick tonight. Stoppage in play before this drive starts. Not sure what's going on here. Looks like the Hampshire sidelines chirping with one of the refs. I'll tell you what, these Berkeley County refs are not afraid to call a sideline warning. Hedgesville got about six of them in the last two weeks against Musselman and Martinsburg. Plotner dumps it off to Coe. Gets past the first man, goes for the first down, and he's ripped out of bounds at the 40. It's a good job by Coe to catch the ball and then find a first down after he caught the ball. Also, a really good job by Plotner. Saw his first and second progressions, didn't like what he saw, so he checked the ball down to Coe for an easy completion. First and 10 from the 40 now, Smith in motion. Looks to him in a bubble screen. Shoves down the first defender, stays in bounds, cuts back inside, still on his feet, and is finally wrestled down by a group of Trojans at the 44 of Hampshire. Hampshire's corners are facing a tough task as they don't have help over the top. So they're one-on-one -on -one with the athletic playmakers of Hedgesville. Plotner dumps it off to Smith again. And there's gonna be a roughing the passer call as Smith jukes out of a tackle, cuts back inside, still on his feet. Inside the 10 now. And a good play by Plotner to get that ball off before he's rocked in the backfield. Roughing the passer is the call. That's a 34-yard pickup. Plotner is now 9 of 13 on the night with two touchdowns. So a great start to the night for him. And with first and goal, let's see what the Eagles go to here. The ground of the air had success in both in the red zone so far tonight. They have Smith down towards the bottom of the field, one on one, might run a slant. I'm, I'm expecting a fade here. Oh, they give it to Smoot up the middle, gets a block. 
And he is stopped just short at the one. I think they'll run the same play call. Wouldn't surprise me here. Maybe a quarterback draw, get Jason back in the end zone. Direct snap to Smoot, and he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. His second of the night. That was really easy for Smoot. Pretty much a walk-in touchdown. Good blocks by up the, the offensive line up the middle. Made it easy for Smoot to score. So with three minutes and 27 seconds left in the first half, the Eagles have pushed their lead to 35 to 14. Can you handle yourself for two minutes? Yeah. Okay, at halftime, just read this list. Um, Aiden, Aiden, uh, Niger. I wrote the number for the Hampshire guys, okay? Yeah. You just, like, this is what happened in the first half. We got the crocodile, the extinct dinosaur, and Lexi Blair. All right, so we've seen that Hampshire runs the option offense. With three minutes and 27 seconds left, do you think they go to the air a little bit more? Try to get, try to get in the end zone, make it a 14-point uh, deficit before the half? I think depending on how their first play call goes, if it is a run play, if they do get good yards off that, I think they have confidence in their rushing attack. But if it's only for a game of two or three and they want to score before the end of the half, I think they'll have to start throwing the ball again. They've had to waste two of their three timeouts, so only one left here in these last three minutes. And if Finnegan gets another pooch kickoff and maybe a good return by the Trojans, they could punch it in. And they do get the ball to start the second half. So maybe some momentum there as that kickoff is short and hopped on by Corbin, and he's met by Carroll and dragged across the 40 to about the 43, and that's good field position for the Trojans and exactly what you want if you're going to start a drive before the half. Yeah, they do have an opportunity to score a touchdown here. Do you think Hall, for the rest of the game, will keep doing pooch kicks, or do you think he'll start kicking it deep? I think after the opening kickoff, they saw the return men for Hampshire. I think the game plan for special teams is to keep it away from them and just test their luck and have faith in their defense to keep them out of the end zone. We haven't seen this all night. Mayfield's in the shotgun. So it looks like they will go to the air in this last half of the first. They won't go to the air, actually, as Clower is driven down by a Breck at the goal line, or excuse me, line of scrimmage. And he didn't get out of bounds, so that clock's going to run. Let's see if uh, Hampshire can run a two-minute offense here. Depending on this next play call, it'll show how much Hampshire's coach has trust in the quarterback, Mayfield. Handoff brought down by Parrish for maybe a one yard gain. So that'll bring up third and long for the Trojans as that clock ticks under two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. So 39 from the 44 for the Trojans as that clock ticks further and further down. Mayfield in the shotgun again. He's got a runner back there with him. Moreland back there. Fakes the handoff. Rolls to his left. Throwing deep. He's got Clower. Niger Smith in coverage. And it's broken up. Hampshire took a chance deep. Couldn't complete the pass to Clower. 
Mason has just left me in the booth. He is currently going down to see Coach Yersh before halftime to get a quick interview with him. Hicks will punt this one for Hampshire. Kicks deep to Smith, he'll return it. He's got a lane on the outside, cuts back inside, loses the ball, picks it back up. There are two flags on the play though. First flag looked to be a legal formation on Hampshire, and then the second flag after the return was probably blocking the back by Hedgesville. A legal procedure on Hampshire's first penalty, and then we have a block in the back on Hedgesville. It's fouls off, so it'll still be procedure. fourth down. On the Trojan, block in the back on the Eagles, offsetting penalties will replay fourth down. There's one minute and 40 seconds left for Hedgesville before the half went with three timeouts left. So if they do get a good return here, look to see Hedgesville try to score some more points going into the half. Hedgesville calls the timeout. Timeout. Eagles. First timeout. A little bit of confusion. Looked like Malachi called a fair catch. There is another penalty on the play though. Fair catch for Bob Brown. Smith. Fair catch for Bob Brown. Smith. A holding call on the Eagles will push them back into their own territory. The assessment for Long Strange will be 13 10 Eagles.
That penalty will push back Hedgesville to their own 10 yard line. Potter's in the shotgun. Smith in motion. Potter takes a snap, drops back. Looking deep for Coe. Coe's got his man beat. Oh, passed a little bit too far for Coe. It'll be second and ten. Inside handoff for Smoot. He finds a hole up the middle. He cuts back. One man to beat Clyro. Going past the 50. And Clyro takes him down from behind at Hampshire's 40. Big first down play for Smoot. Gain of 50 for Smoot. Hedges has two timeouts left with one minute and 17 seconds. So they're going to try to push the score here late. Liner rolls to his right. Looking for Brown on the outside. Cuts inside. Beats his man. Clower almost gets him. Brown takes it to the house. That's a touchdown for Balakai Brown. There are flags on the play, though. Going to be a holding on the offense. And then there's... That holding penalty will take back Brown's touchdown. That penalty will push back Hedgesville to their own 46. It'll be first and 24. Plotner's in the shotgun. Sends Heath in motion. He's looking deep for Porter. Oh! Porter had his man beat. Plotner with a good pass. He just couldn't catch it. Porter had man-to-man -man coverage with no safety help. Plotner saw it, gave him a good chance to score a touchdown there, but Porter can't complete it. There'll be a timeout used by Hampshire, the last one of the half.
Bonner can't escape the blitz. Sacked by number 20, Jensen Catlett. Things are getting chippy down there on the field. Yours is going to protect his quarterback. He does not like that extra hit on Plotner. Yours is going to make sure he lets the official know about that one. And I don't know if the mic is picking this up. The crowd is not happy about that. As Plotner's a senior, he's one of the fan favorites. It'll be third and 37. Looks like all chances for Hedges will score before the end of the half are now over. Stay tuned for the halftime show. We have Mason that's going to interview Coach Yours, and we have the band performing at halftime, and we also have a special treat for you. The dance team will be performing at the half. Plotner's in the shotgun on this long third down play. Drops back. He throws it up for Brown. Brown has a chance on the outside. He slips and falls. He had Caleb Cannon beat on the outside. Just lost his footing. Well placed ball by Plotner. Finnegan Hall is going to be on, on this one to punt the ball. Going to get punted. It's a low scribbler. Ball rolls, takes a good Hedgesville Eagles bounce. Falls marked dead at Hampshire's own 26. 20 seconds left in the half. Hampshire will probably need and just take it into the half. Down by 21. Flowers in motion, it's a fake pitch to him. Mayfield rolls to his right, finds a man. And a good open field tackle by Jesse Kane. That should be the end of the first half. Gain of five on the play, and that's the half. We'll send it down to Mason for his interview with Coach Yurish at halftime. Is there? Okay. Mason is with Coach Yours right now, ready to get Coach Yours' thoughts on the first half.
Uh, we got a holding call early and got us put back a little bit. And then uh, they said Malachi had an illegal fair catch back there deep. And then we just had two drop balls that probably were touchdowns. All right, and on their offensive side for Hampshire, clower has been a big guy running outside. What's your plan to stop him in the second half? Oh, we just got to keep contained and keep those guys inside because our speed's outside, so we got to make sure that our, they go back into our big boys. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Yes, That's Coach Harris. Tyler, back up to you, bud. Thanks, Mason. Seems like Seems like Coach Harris is pretty happy with the Eagles' first half as they have a 35-14 to 14 lead. A little bit of a recap for Hedges as well. Plunger's playing pretty good right now. Has a few passing touchdowns. Brown catching a few of those. Speed has a few on the ground. And Hedges will has a 35-14 lead. Hampshire's been using Clower to run the ball effectively. He's been their big play playmaker on offense. We'll get ready for the band to perform.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field for the first public performance, the Hedgesville High School Dance Team. Tyler, no eagle head for you. Is that mine? I don't know what to do with it. Is this mine? I think so. Yeah. Is that yours right now?
<laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, hi, and welcome to Hedgesville High School, home of your 2017 Hedgesville Eagles. I'm here with my good friend and partner, Tyler Bubb. Tyler, nice to have you back. Thanks for having me on. We're here for a great night of football. It's senior night here in Hedgesville at Muma Stadium as we will watch our senior boys play their last game on this field. Maybe not. We might host a playoff game. It all depends on this game in the following weeks. Uh, Tyler, coming off a couple tough losses to Musselman and Martinsburg, what do you think the Eagles need to do to win this game? They can't turn over the ball. Um, if they force turnovers on Hampshire, that would be very successful. They also need to win special teams battles. Yeah, last week, 83-7 uh, to seven game. Kind of hard to bounce back from that. Eagles had a long week of practice, but I think if this defense throws up a zero in the first quarter, it'll get their confidence back from last night or last week's drubbing. Maybe we can ride this wave all the way into playoffs. When you look at Martinsburg on paper, they're one of the most talented teams in this state. Great dynasty they have there, but they have a lot of playmakers. I think Hedges will match up a lot better against Hampshire than they did last week against Martinsburg. Yep. Tonight, uh, Hampshire comes in at two and five. Not the best season for them so far. Uh, a lot of common opponents for the Eagles and the Trojans. We played Preston, both beat Preston. Mountain Ridge, we beat Mountain Ridge. They lost to Mountain Ridge, and we both lost to Musselman. So a lot of common opponents. So we've seen the same offense and defense. Should be an interesting matchup between these teams tonight. Can I go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that they can rush the ball effectively, with, especially with Clower, really talented playmaker for Hampshire. Yeah, as I asked Coach Shira, she said they're going to try to keep him on the outside, so they're playmakers in Brown from the safety spot, Kane from his middle linebacker position, outside linebacker position. They can get to him and bring him down. On the offensive side of the ball for the Eagles, Jason Plotner having a very, very good game for him. Nine, nine of 16 with uh, two, three touchdowns, excuse me. Struggled, kind of their drive stalled late in that first half. Uh, he's got 257 total yards, pushing his total even further past the 2,300 yard mark. Uh, Malachi Brown has eclipsed the 1,000 receiving yard mark for the season, so congrats to Malachi. As we are about one minute from the start of the second half as Hampshire has emerged from their locker room. And what do you think the coaches from Hampshire told their guys coming out of the locker room, getting the ball first to start this third quarter? Um, they have to keep fighting. They have to stop the run for Hedgesville. They can stop the run and make it one-dimensional for Hedgesville, making them pass the ball to Plotter. The longer they stay in this game, the more confidence they have going late into the second half. Definitely. It's only a three-score game. I mean, if you look at the scoreboard, you look at that Hampshire, Hampshire sideline, not as many guys as we've got, but... You know, you got to think, hey, score on this first drive, maybe force a turnover, a three and out, a good stop on defense, keep the Eagles off the scoreboard, punch it in again. We got a one score game. Uh, an announcement from the ENN crew we would like to congratulate the debate and speech team who competed in their first tournament last night at Turner Ashby. We had sixth placing in speech, uh, sixth place, Lisa Sabanowski, fifth, Gina Sabanowski, fourth, Bonnie. Macias, Macias, what is it? Macias, Macias, excuse me. Uh, fifth, Dalton Kendig, uh, another fifth place finish in Connor Cook, and Danny, Diana Johnson got second. Danya Johnson got second, and then Dalton and Danya also received first in the costume contest. This earned Hedgesville High School the uh, Tor Johnson Trophy for 2017 and 2018. And in the end of the night, they headed home and brought Hedgesville back three trophies. So a good night for the debate and speech team. So we're not all about sports here at Hedgesville. Yeah, really talented group at Hedgesville. Really proud of everyone's accomplishments this year. As the teams get loose for the second half, as we said, Hampshire will receive. And oh, something we've noticed is that Finnegan Hall, the kicker for the Eagles, has been doing a bunch of pooch kicks and if you don't know what that is, that's a, little, uh, a kick where he kicks it kind of pretty high in the air and doesn't go very far. So he gives his um, hands guys a chance to go down there and get it. And do you think he's going to come out here and do that and keep it away from Moreland and Hoop and Garner and uh, Clower, excuse me, and try to keep them from a big return? I think it depends on how much trust the Eagles have in their defense. Yeah, if they're playing field possession, they kick it deep, but if they don't have trust in their, or if they have trust in their defense, excuse me, they're gonna pooch kick it. 
I think the defense has shown that they can stop the uh, Trojans when they need to, but the Trojan offense has also proven that they can start deep in their own territory and march it all the way down the field. So we'll see how this uh, second half starts, but like we said, if Hampshire can punch it in here, even a field goal, make it a smaller deficit, they might turn this game around into more of a contest. Hampshire has a big opportunity to score on their first possession in the second half. Really get momentum going in the Trojans' favor. We'll see if the Trojans pull off this play we saw in the first half that was called back due to holding. It was where the quarterback, Mayfield, Mayfield rolled out, looked like he was going to pass, just tucked it and ran for a good 50 yards. The holding call brought it back, but it was a very, very good play that got them a huge chunk of yards. we got to see if they pull that back out in this second half. I'm sure the Hampshire coaches circled that play on the play sheet. They'll probably go back to that play at least once this first opening drive because it's been successful for them when they did run effectively. And you got to think they're definitely going to go to Clower. He's been electric from the outside in the motion, in the option uh, offense that they run. Yours did say he wants to contain Clower. Let's see if he's effective in doing that. Kicks it deep or short. I'm, I'm going to say pooch kick it again. I think that's what their game plan is right now. Uh, some scores from around the area. Uh, Martinsburg leads Jefferson 38 to six. Musselman is up on Washington, 35 to seven at half. Actually, excuse me, Martinsburg now leads Jefferson, 52 to six. As we are underway, as Finnegan Hall kicks it deep and it bounces and fields it at the at the three yard line. Slow return, setting up his blocks, and he's got a lane. And nice Finnegan Hall Finnegan. comes up and makes a tackle, and that gets the Eagles sideline hyped up. A fan favorite that Finnegan Hall. Got good size to him. Really made a good open field tackle. Really, really, really good guy. Everyone loves him at the school, and he's going to be congratulated by his coaches for that stop. Second time he's stopped somebody this year. He had a really nice uh, blow up out of bounds at South Hagerstown a few weeks ago. So a good start for the Trojan offense. See if they can capitalize off of it. Starting at the 37. Back in the option formation. Got two receivers out there now. Corbin in motion. Fake the toss to him. Hand off up the middle. Flag thrown quickly. Moreland's dragged down. Holding penalty probably. Looks like it. Yep, holding on the offense. It's a bad start for the Trojan offense. Pushes them back. If you're Hampshire's coach, how much trust do you have in Mayfield as your quarterback? He's shown he can throw the ball. He just hasn't been able to complete a whole lot. One for four on the night, but that's not their offense. Their offense is on the ground and pound it down the middle, run up the sideline, see if you can get big plays. But, you know, he's shown he can throw it when he needs to. He's just got to get it to those receivers. So after the penalty, it'll be first and 18 from the 29 for the Trojans. Brad Sigley's out wide for the Trojans. As he goes back to pass, and his receiver was still staring at him as the ball bounced in the secondary. So not the best communication there. A solid play call, but... When the receiver's staring at you and you're already throwing the ball, it's not going to be too effective. Nah. It's probably a play call they don't run much as the Trojan offense is one-dimensional with a running style attack. 
Another factor that I think is worth pointing out is see how those defensive linemen for Hedgesville play out into the rest of the game, see if they're tired at all. Hedgesville stacking the box as they send Corbin in motion again. End around, no one home. He's got room. Brown coming to meet him, and he's shoved out of bounds. Hooping Garner, a huge run as that one was well disguised. A good run by the Trojans to get in that Eagle territory. The Eagle defense is fooled to that right side. Je Jesse Kane was the only one left on that left side. He shed the block well, and Hooper Garner was able to get outside. Brown coming nicely from his position to come back and make that tackle, or else Hooper Garner may have been for six. Up the middle with Moreland. Short gain, nothing really doing up the middle there. Moreland on the carry. Stop by Hughes. Gain of two, second down. Tackle by Nathaniel Hughes in the trenches. Still in the same formation, showing no signs to pass. Hand off to Corbin, and he is, gets around the block. I thought he was stopping. Nigeria Smith comes up to make another solo tackle, and he, like we said earlier, leads the team, leads the defense in tackles. Looks like the church just called the same play call, just flipped the sides. Wasn't as successful this time, though, as Hedges was ready for it. So third and seven right now. Third and seven from the 32. Is this four down territory for the Trojans, you think? I don't know yet. I think it's a little bit too close to call, but the way they run their offense and how the clock keeps moving, it might be. Mayfield's rushed out of the pocket, flag thrown, and he's gonna be dropped. We're gonna see what this flag's on. It'll be a hold on the guard. Yep. Eagles, Eagles sideline already declining. They're going to take the fourth down and see what Hampshire has to do. So fourth and 18 from the Eagle 43. Hampshire showing no sign of punting, not going to try to pin them deep, so it looks like their coaching staff realizes this is actually fourth down territory. Line to gain is the 25-yard line, so they got a ways to go. I don't quite understand this play call. It's fourth and long. If they don't get this, Hedges was going to have good field position. I think the coaches realize that they need to get this first down if they actually think they have a chance to win. Or are they going to the air? Are they going to try to get it on the ground here, They Bob? have to. I don't think they can run the ball with the, the box yep. stacked. Going to the air, rolling to his left. Throws, double coverage, nearly picked off by Porter, but it won't matter. The Eagles will take over. It actually worked out for the Eagles well. Because he dropped that pass, that's a 20-yard field position change. If he catches that, he'd fall down around the 20. Now the ball is at the 42. You know Porter definitely wanted that interception. Would have been a huge momentum boost for the Eagles. So the Eagles take over at the 43. Bunch formations on both sides of the line. Brown in motion, fakes the handoff to him. It's going to go over the middle, up top for Porter. And he can't catch it. Second time he's dropped an open pass. And let's, Plotner doesn't look too happy with his receiver. That's frustrating for Plotner. First pass of the second half, man. Good pass. Hit him in the numbers. Poor just couldn't come down with it. Jamal Blaine will come in for him. Good play call. They had Porter open. And before the half ended in the first half, Porter dropped a... Open ball, he was by himself. Same formation for the Eagles. Now they send uh, Smith out in motion. He's gonna run up the sideline and the ball is skied over Heath's head. So after two incompletions, it's third down and 10. 
And if this is big if the Ham Hampshire Trojans can force a three and out. Yeah, they had Hicks and uh, number 82 Austin Wright coming off the edges and Plotner had to make a decision. He tried to get rid of it early. Heath couldn't pull it down. Sky ball up for Coe. He's by himself, and he looked to have caught it, and the, the ref said he was out of bounds, but I thought he got his foot down. Fans not happy with that call, and I thought he brought it down, but so after three incompletions to start the half and a three and out, Hampshire's going to get the ball back as Finnegan Hall is going to try to pin him deep. Hedgesville fans are not afraid to voice their opinion to the out. To that the is for sure. They are very vocal fans. Very passionate. Clower back deep, standing at his own 30, awaiting this punt. Finnegan kicks it way past him, and this is going to roll and take a Hedgesville bounce. And inside the 10, a great punt by Finnegan Hall. 48-yard punt is the official total on that one as Hampshire will now begin at their own 10-yard line. Great job at pinning him deep by Finnegan right there. Trojan offense has a lot of work to do. They got a score here. But it's going to take a long drive for them to do that. So if they get first down here, give their quarterback a chance to get out of his own territory, deep in his own territory. He'll have some confidence then. That playbook opens up a little bit more for the Trojan offense. Corbin in motion. Fake the toss to him, give it up to Moreland, and he's going to be gang tackled for about a five yard gain. Brown, Smith, and Heath all there for the tackle. That was a good job by Mayfield to hold it till the last second and then give the ball off to Moreland. Yeah, he's got great vision for just a junior quarterback. It looks like they've got a guy for this year, for the remainder of this year and next year. Maybe they can build on his talent. I mean, two and five this year so far. I think they can build with him. Yeah, they'll lose Clower next year, but his leadership should help. Good spin move by Clower to break a tackle and get the first down. Very electric runner. He's been what's keeping Hampshire in this game, really. If you can't find anything good from the Trojan offense, Clower has been a bright spot for the team tonight. Hand off to Corbin, he's gonna run to the outside and is blown up by Devin Heath for a loss. Nice tackle there by number 11. Good job to set the block on the outside. Keep Trojan's offense to a gain of about one. Loss of one actually. The Eagles defense subs on Smoot, takes out EJ Heath. So we're about halfway through this third quarter. Still no one has broken the scoreboard just yet here in the second half. A lot of motion as Clower gets the ball and makes a nice juke for about a six, seven yard gain. Clower's done a good job making good jump cuts up through the middle of the field, you know, making it tough for the Hedgesville Eagles defenders to tackle him. He's quite the elusive runner, and he's done a good job of just moving around. He's really, like you said, been the bright spot. All right, so third and four from their own 26. Hampshire definitely got to get a first down here. Let's see if they go to one of their big third down plays. Give it to Corbin, he's got the first down. And a little bit more as he's spun out of bounds by Smith. 
First down at about the 35-yard line. And this drive will continue for Hampshire. As you see, we've got a dinosaur in the student section tonight. It's tonight's costume night. Let's see, we've got Patrick Starr, Barnacle Boy, a king. I'm really stuck on that dinosaur, though. Anyway, back to the game. Hand off to Clower, and he's blown up in the backfield. Jesse Kane stops Clower. Clower looks to be down, though. That is not what you want to see if you're Hampshire. And he's, they're waving the tra uh, training staff over quickly. I and mean, if you're a Trojan, Trojan supporter, that's not what you want to see. I can't really tell what's bothering him from up here. Maybe an arm shoulder issue. Looks like he got the wind taken out of him. Took a shot down low. Hope it's nothing serious as Clower is one of the more talented playmakers on the field. And you got to think if you're Hampshire and your big uh, elusive guy goes down, what are you going to do for offense here in the second half as you try to come back from a 21 point deficit? Well, the coach is probably talking about that right now, trying to figure out what they have to do to keep the offense moving. Clower gets up and walks on his own power. That's a good sign if you're Hampshire fans. All right, so second down and 13 from the 33. Now that we're back to the action. All right, so with Clower out, Moreland's now in the backfield with Corbin and Mayfield. Moreland, Ho go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, Hooping Ganger Garner was back there too, but Moreland's gonna pass, rushed out and brought down in the backfield by Zar Parrish. Nice play by the senior. Instantly, first look after Clower's injury, it looks like they're gonna try to rely on the pass game, man. They didn't work for them on that play. Third and long now, third and 22. Line to gain is the 46. Mayfield in the shotgun now, but looks like the Hampshire Island is going to want to talk about this. They call their first time out of the half. Those mistakes are killing the Hampshire offenses. They've had a few of those mistakes early in the first half. Really limits their timeout usage in the in the drives late in the first half and second half. Amanda 
Sammy Coyle, Caitlin Smith, and Courtney Roy. Looks like Clowers running up and down that sideline, trying to get whatever the issue was loose. That's good to see if you're a Trojan fan. He's probably itching to get back on this field, help his team get back in this game, but it looks like he's going to stay off the field for this third and long. As Mayfield's back in the shotgun. Uh, Moreland back there with him. He's rolling to his left. Overthrows his receiver, Trent Corbin. So since Clower's injury, it's been two pass plays for Hampshire, and they haven't worked. And it looks like big number 75 is out there to kick. John Hicks, like we said over and over again, he's got a boot. So let's see, let's game, let's see if he's got a game plan for this punt. You got Malachi Brown back there, who has taken a punt to the back for six earlier this year. And another oh, timeout no, by timeout. Hampshire, and that's not what you want to do this early in the second half, is waste your timeouts trying to come back from a 21-point deficit. It's tough for Hampshire because they run the ball, use a lot of the time management. And when you burn timeouts like that, down, down by 21, it's really tough for the offense to operate, run on no timeouts. What you can't do if you're Hampshire here is let Brown get an electric return, as he's not really going far, expecting a deep kick here. I'm not saying anything, but this Hicks guy, he's a big guy who can boot it. The Eagles look like they might bring the house on this one. They're trying to keep it away from him. That one takes a big Hampshire bounce, and Clower back in the game is going to down it at the 30-yard line. So they do keep it away from Brown and reverse or switch the field. So good job by Hicks. He's a big guy weighing 240, and he's the punter for Hampshire. That guy does not skip like that. Uh, according to senior running back Gavin Smoot, he also throws for the Hampshire track team. Said he's pretty good at that, so all-around athlete for Hampshire. So the Eagles taking over on the 30-yard line, second drive of this uh, third quarter. Hand off to Smoot up the middle. Cuts back inside and is taken down by Clower and a bunch of other Trojans. But not after he runs for 15 yards. Smoot has been able to find the holes running the ball for Hedgesville. Looks like they're going to go no huddle, though. Some tempo for the Eagles as they might try to punch this in and really put Hampshire out of this game. Another run to Smoot. Back up the middle. This time taken down for just about five or six yards. Catlett with the stop. That's a bright side for Hedgesville because the last two weeks the rushing attack hasn't been that great against two solid opponents. So good to see them get back on track this week. Quarterback draw for Jason Plotner. He's got the first down and a bit more nice run by Plotner. As a flag comes in late, let's see what that's about. That's at, it's it's coming in about the 45. Number 51. He doesn't look too happy with it. He had that Hampshire defender in a chokehold. I didn't see that. I was watching Jason run. That's a good spot by you, bub. And it is, in fact, holding on the Eagles. And this is going to bring back a big run for, from Plotner. It's nice to see, though, that Jason, uh, that they're getting some design runs for Jason. You don't look at him. He's a pretty big dude, listed at 6'4". You know, you don't think he's going to be quick, but when he tucks it and run, and he's got a couple blocks, he can make some guys miss and get some big chunks of yards. Yeah, Plotner will lay down the shore, fight for those extra yards that are crucial to keep your drives going. Some confusion on the hedges of the offense, not really knowing what's going on right now.
Rolling out. Going to go deep for Brown. Brown pulls it in. Oh, what a catch by Brown. Nice play. Impressive by both Brown and Plotner. Clower had the coverage for Hampshire. Used that sideline really well as an extra defender, and just Brown made a great play on the ball. Put it where only Malachi could get it. Great throw by Jason. Smoot up the middle again. Met quickly. Plotner drops back. Got to watch his blind side. Goes to the end zone. Scott Coe, well out of bounds. Yurish not happy with the placement of that ball. Jason really hasn't found Hunter that much. Just a little um, dump down pass earlier in the first half. Other than that, he can't get it to him. And Hunter's a big guy. I would definitely want to target him a lot, especially on those fade patterns just like that. Fortunately for Hedgesville, though, Brown and Smith have picked up the role of Harko. Let's see if they give Coe another chance. There's, uh, nope, inside handle. Nice run up the middle. Clower first to greet him. Yurish motioning for up tempo offense. That Hampshire defense is tired. They're gasping for air. Oh, and they have Coe wide open. Nope, Corbin's out there now, man coverage. Another run for Smoot, though. He's met at the line, no gain. Those defensive players for Hampshire have to be tired. Looks like Hampshire didn't bring everyone on the football team. It looks like they're going to keep the same defensive players in. Jason rolling out to his left. Got to watch as he's hit hard, but still fires a bullet for a touchdown. Ten-yard touchdown. That's really impressive from Plotner. Rolling to his left, knows he's going to get hit. Steps into his throw and finds, who's that, Brown? Brown back there Brown for, for his second, touchdown. third touchdown, actually. It looks like Hicks, I think he was the guy first to greet uh, Plotner on that hit. Looks like he's down right now. It wasn't Hicks. I can actually see him standing in the Hampshire huddle now. I have no idea who's down right now, but that was... Quite the hit Jason took, but still delivered a bullet to the end zone for his fourth touchdown pass of the game. That score right there probably puts the game out of control. It's probably going to be over. Yep, with about a minute 50 left in the third quarter, you might start to see Hedgesville getting some guys some experience before the bye week especially some seniors that haven't gotten a chance to play tonight. Or at all this season. So they've got a big, good group of guys down there. As the Hampshire players now up and moving. Looked like Caleb Twig, the senior, was down. Didn't exactly see what happened, but it's good to see that he's up and moving. Looked like Hicks got part of Twig, too. Yeah, Hicks is a big boy, like we've said about a million times tonight. I wouldn't want to get hit by him. Unfortunately for Hampshire next year, they will lose Hicks and Clower. But I'm sure they'll have next man up ready to replace their roles on the team. Huben Gardner will also be leaving. Finnegan adds the extra point. He is now six for six on the night. 
And that pushes the Eagle lead to 28. Well, Trojans are doing a good job of keeping the Eagles off the scoreboard in this third quarter. But like you said, this one may be out of reach. Hampshire just isn't equipped to run this type of offense down late in games. I'd like to point out that our broadcast is reaching all over the United States as I have family members in New York watching. I'd like to shout out my Aunt Monty and uh, give her a belated happy birthday shout out. So thank you for joining us tonight. Anthony Fortson is messing with his sister, Antoinette, as the cheerleaders do push-ups for every uh, point the Eagles score. He was pushing his sister down Toner to get lower as Clower fields this kick. And he's straight up the middle, untouched till about the 30-yard line. And Jesse Kane is finally the one to rip him down. So it looks like the pooch kick was more effective than the long kicks. Yep. And Clower just... Didn't really sprint right away. Kind of jogged a little bit of a walk, honestly, for the first five yards and waited for his blocks to be set up. That was a good job by Clyer. Waiting to see what developed in front of him. Saw the open lane, took it, and gave uh, Hampshire a good return. So Hampshire will start on their 43-yard line. Mayfield in the backfield, or in the shotgun, excuse me. Hands it off to Moreland. Turns it up the middle for a small two or three yard gain. Down, take it if we oh. Mayfield in the shotgun again. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. He's got the first down as Gage Abrek brings him down at about the 40. Another first down for the Trojans as we reach one minute in this third quarter. Some plays have worked better than others. That uh, QB keeper by Mayfield's been working pretty well so far. And after this game, Hedges has only got one game on the schedule after the bye week, and that's Spring Mills. And if you're Spring Mills, do you see some of these um, option plays and try to implement that in your offense? Because Hedges, has, they've stopped some, but on others, they have just haven't looked comfortable at stopping the run. It, it's tough for an offense to run this type of style if you're a air raid sort of offense. I mean, to be fair to the Eagle defense, how often do you see it? An option attack like this every every week, you know, it's something you have to prepare for and just work on it as the game goes on. Mayfield in the shotgun again, as it looks like they're going to keep going to the air and try to get some points back in this game. Rolling to his right, cuts up field, got a first down. Smith. Strips the ball, ball's loose, and Porter hops on it. Nigeer Smith with a huge play and gets the momentum back in the Eagles' sideline. Mayfield was streaking to the end zone. Smith and Jamal Bland, the only ones greeting him. And Smith just pops his hand in there and rips it out. And that's a man move right there by Nigeer Smith. Just as I was going to say, Mayfield's doing a good job holding on to the ball, not turning it over tonight. As soon as I was going to say that, Smith strips the ball and the Eagles recover the fumble. That's Nigeria's second big play on the defense tonight. Had a fumble recovery in the first quarter, and this in the second half, he's got a, a forced fumble. The man down for the Eagles is EJ Heath. Didn't see what really happened. Looks like he's cramping or something. 
Hey, he's getting up. He's good. So the Eagles will take over with four tenths of a second left on their own five yard line. So you're at your own five. Do you think they just let Jason drop back and just see if they can get a big play to end this third quarter, or are they just going to run it and run this clock out? I think they'll just run it out. There's no reason to try to force it in the air, possibly turn over the ball, and give Hampshire good field position. And they've been effective on the ground, so I don't see why they would pass it. Smoot's back there with him, and they're going to give it to him up the middle as Clower and the ref kind of in the way is going to make the stop. He does gain the first down, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter with your Hedgesville Eagles 42 and the Hampshire Trojans 14. One bright spot for Hampshire is Mayfield is the quarterback, and he's only a junior. So he's getting valuable reps at this position. So you have more experience, more confidence, more leadership he'll develop throughout the year. And then he's looking to have a big, strong senior season. I've been impressed with him. I mean, he has struggled through the air, but that's obviously not their offense. And when he has tucked it and ran, as you can see, I mean, a fumble and a penalty have brought back his biggest runs. But... You know, he's just a talented kid, and he works, he fits well in their option offense. Regional contest for soccer will be on Tuesday at Spring Mills against Washington for both the boys and the girls. So as we switch fields, the Eagles will start this drive at their own 18. Up big here late, or at the beginning of the fourth quarter, excuse me. How would you assess the Eagles' performance so far tonight? If you, I'm the head coach, Coach Urish, I have to be pleased with my Eagles. One turnover, you can work with that. Turnover bug's been huge for us this year, mostly through the air with interceptions. Plotners look really strong, and that's what you want to see going into a bye week. You can build off of that and go into your rival game against Spring Mills to end the season, which will be a playoff implication type of game because obviously the score will remain. Nothing, seems, uh, nothing too crazy seems to be going to ha or likely to happen. So the Eagles will move to... Uh, Six and three as Malachi jukes out a would-be tackler, and he's streaking to the end zone. Corbin, only man left, cuts back inside. Spin move by Malachi, and he's going to take it again. What a receiver the Eagles have. What a play. 82-yard touchdown. Big players make big plays. Exactly. Plotner's fifth touchdown. You can't ask much more from your offense. One thing to point out, too, the penalties were kind of a problem in the first half. They've limited this this half. That's Malachi's fourth touchdown reception of the night as Finnegan adds the extra point, and that pushes your score. Eagles, 49. Trojans 14.
All right, Finnegan back to kick this one off. Kicks it deep again. Clower fields it at the nine. Sets up his blocks. He's really good at reading the holes. He's got one here. Good return as Owe Ash brings him down with Smith. As he brings it back into Eagle territory, I don't know what changed or what the plan was, but they went away from those pooch kicks, and Clower's been able to hurt the Eagles special teams. Possibly the Eagles are working on their kickoff coverage, but I don't understand why they wouldn't pooch it anymore, because when they're pooching it, they're doing a lot better job on special teams. Just shows the confidence the coaches have in the Eagles defense. The Eagles have been able to stop the Trojans all night long. Just two scores for Hampshire. They have 14 right now as the handoff to Corbin up the middle goes for no gain. Mayfield in the backfield now. Got three receivers on the near side. Man coverage with uh, Jamal Bland on the far sideline as he rolls. He's being chased by Parrish, and he does get it away. And good thing for him, there was a receiver in the vicinity. That could have been intentional grounding. Corbin was the intended receiver. Tried to open up a screen, and Heath held on to his man well, and the play never really developed. So I'm looking down at the hedge of the sideline. I see Jason Plotner undoing some of his pads, so we'll have to see. But it looks like his night might be done. And a pretty good night indeed. I have him down at 11 of 23 with five touchdown passes so and no interceptions. So a big, big night for Jason. He'll be happy with his senior night performance. Mayfield rolling out, chased by Branner and Hughes, and that one's thrown up for grabs and just knocked down by Smith as a flag comes in. They're gonna call a defensive pass interference on Bland, possibly. Pass incomplete to the left, wide in play. It is pass interference on the Eagles, and that will move Hampshire further into Eagle territory. So a break on third down. Not what you want to see if you're the Eagle coaching staff, as they are clearly unpleased. Hampshire's going to end up losing this game, but they do have something to work off of going into next week. The score doesn't show how hard the Hampshire players have played tonight. Some really good plays negated by a fumble here, a penalty there. They've really shown that they are a team that can build off a season like this. These Hampshire players have to be tired. A lot of them are playing both ways, just playing for pride at this point. Ball at the 28-yard line for Hampshire, second and 10 here. Mayfield drops back. Branner first to greet him, throws it over the middle, nearly intercepted by Nigeria Smith. Would have been his seventh of the year. That could have helped the stat, the interception of the game. Yep. Uh, senior James uh, Carroll checking in for the first time tonight, other than special teams. Good to see Coach Harris getting some of those senior players in here in the fourth quarter. Up big with just over six minutes left to go in this game. Eagles had to make a defensive adjustment as Clower was wide open as they handed up to Corbin up the middle. Oh, 
Corbin on the carry. Hey, Brett on the stop. Pure Hampshire, what do you, what do you take away from this game? I think if I'm the Trojan coaches, you have to look at your offensive product productivity with the option runs to the outside with Clower and Moreland and all those guys. Pretty impressive tonight. As that pass is completed over the middle for Mayfield, his, just his second completion tonight. Look who caught that pass, Clower. Really, really impressive performance tonight. Yeah, but as I was saying, you got to look at those plays that were really working tonight against the Eagle defense. Build off of those, take those into your next game, and just hope you can salvage maybe one or two more wins left in your season. Hand off to Corbin around the edge as he's met by Nigeria Smith for just two yards. Mayfield rolling, throws to the end zone, and well over Clower's head, incomplete. Third and nine from their the Eagle 15-yard line as Hampshire looks to kind of make this score a little bit more respectable here. Hampshire going in next week will play Washington. Washington, if I believe so, they have not won a game this year. I don't they? believe so, but they I think there was a game on their schedule that I don't remember if they pulled it out or not. Where's that game at, Tyler? It is at or Hampshire. All right. So Hampshire's going to have a chance to win one next week against a uh, defeated, completely defeated Hampshire team, or excuse me, Washington team, as that pass is incomplete in the end zone. Bringing up fourth down. For Hampshire, though, take the bright spots away from this game. There have been a few of those. And look forward to playing Washington at home next week. It's going to be a more manageable victory opportunity for the Trojans. Next week, the Eagles are off their only bye week of the season. Good chance to maybe rest some guys, get some guys healthy, work on your offense, and get ready for that Spring Mills game in two weeks. Passing deep to the end zone. Knocked down by Jesse Kane. Nearly had his second interception of the season. Turnover on downs, and now the Eagles will have a chance to just run this clock down and pick up their sixth win of the year and end their small two-game losing skid. And the Eagles came into this game ranked in the West Virginia Secondary Schools uh, Athletic Commission rankings at 11, and that would mean they'd have to travel for their first uh, playoff game. If you're in that top eight, you get home field advantage. So the Eagles need this win. Obviously, they're going to obtain it with just under three minutes left to go and up by 35. But that Spring Mills game, like we've said, is a huge game, huge playoff implications. They win that one. You got to think, hey, are we playing at Moomaw Stadium in the playoffs or are we traveling to Morgantown? Because that is who the Eagles are projected to play in the first round. It's a huge chance for Hedgesville to grow on what, what's happened in the past few years. Um, yours won't have trouble getting the boys pumped up for Sprig Mills in two weeks. Expect a good game between those two teams. Sprig Mills is also playing for playoff opportunity. Uh, a common opponent between Spring Mills and Hedgesville was South Hagerstown. The Eagles' first loss of the year, uh, second week of the game, second week of the season. They lost that game 12 to two, and later on in the season, Spring Mills beat South Hagerstown 22 to eight. So you know between these players, uh, close town rivalry that they're going to talk about that. And I'm sure Spring Mills players are letting them know, hey, we can take care of business with the South Hagerstown Rebels. Why couldn't you do it? as Smoot runs up the middle for about seven or eight yards. And they're just gonna keep the ball on the ground and run this clock out as Heath is in at quarterback now. Single to carry, 
Some guys you don't normally see on the field, some seniors getting some playing time. We've got uh, Carroll, like we've mentioned, Jonathan Breeden's on the far sideline. Another handoff to Smoot. Gets the first down and thrown forward to about the 30. Looks that Hedgesville won't have any injured players going into the bye week, which is always important. They can use that time to study film, you know, get a game plan going for Spring Mills, and take advantage of that extra week off. Uh, tonight, we'd like to thank you for joining us. This was our last live stream uh, football game of the season. But look forward to us during basketball season as Coach Church's Eagles look to get further in the postseason. Last year, they lost to Musselman in sectionals. He's got a good squad this year, and we should expect a lot out of Coach Church's offense. I'd like to thank the ENN crew. They, they've done a great job uh, producing this video and live stream tonight. They've done a great job all season, too. Big thanks to Mason for letting me in the booth with you. You do a great job. Thanks, Tyler. I love having you up here. It's fun to talk with you all night as Smoot runs up the middle again for 15 more yards as we are now under a minute. Uh, before we go, we'd like to give one final shout out to the volleyball team as they start their uh, Spook Fest Invitational in Parkersburg tomorrow. Good luck, girls. Uh, another congratulations to the boys and girls soccer teams as they won sectionals. Last night, 5-1 over Spring Mills for the boys, 5-0 over Musselman for the girls, as they will compete at regionals on Tuesday, also hosted at Spring Mills. And we are under 15 seconds here, and the Eagles are just going to let this clock run, maybe get this final playoff. And it looks like we are going to head into week nine with a 6-3 Eagle team as your final score from Hedgesville tonight, your Eagles 49, the Hampshire Trojans 14. A quick recap for you, Malachi Brown, obviously my player of the game, four touchdown receptions, uh, three of them over 50 yards, really good player. Jason Pliner did well in the pocket. Bub, what'd you see from the Eagles tonight? Solid performance, didn't overlook this game, which is always good. They'll be able to go into the bye week with some positives, and then they'll have some stuff they can work on and get better to perfect for Spring Mills in two weeks. Yep. Great game by both teams. Clower, definitely the highlight for the Trojans, but tonight the Eagles' offense and defense is too strong as we pick up the 49-14 win here at Moomaw Stadium on senior night. As we said just a moment ago, this is our last live stream for football this year. We'd like to thank you all for joining us, and good night from Moomaw Stadium.